For jealousy. For jealousy now. Read. Is the rage of a man. It says jealousy is the rage of a man. Now you 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 had a problem with that now. Read. Go forth. He will not spare in the day of vengeance. If you get caught in that woman's house in that man's house with his wife. It says jealousy is the rage of a man. That's why you was like, damn, I ain't even have my peace on me. She should have told me. Because you know when that dude comes in, there's gonna be a problem in there. He may not just deal with the sister. He may see some nigga, hey man, hey, you got a problem, it's mine. What is you doing? What's your name? Aaron. What's your name, bro? Bacon. Bacon. Now, the officer told me about the situation. Like, what, what's going on in our community? Because I know the officer asked that. But a, a, a main thing that's going on in our community is adultery, right? Now, the officer mentioned that you was at Shorty's house and, you know, her husband was coming home or something like that. You ain't even know, right? But if you sleep with her, that's adultery, right? Get that law. Get Exodus 20. And what, what we out here to do, first thing we, we out here to show you, that's why all the... It's not you, right? But she knew better, right? Yeah. But that's a problem. What we're showing our people is the so-called you. If you're a black, Hispanic, or Native American, you're an Israelite according to the Bible. We know that based off of the curses that we read to you. That You, you admitted that we curse, right? All those different things. We know that the cursed people that are walking this earth are Israelites, right? The only way to come out of that is by repenting and coming out of this world to get Hosea 4 verse 1 real quick. Hold that real quick. We're going to deal with this because that's the issue in our community. That's the reason why these things happen to us as a people. That's the reason why we, we came over here on this means of transportation. If we try to say, okay, no, we didn't come over on slave ships. Guess what else happened though? This damn show happened to our people. The Native Americans, they got their behinds with. They got their land taken. They women raped. They children take it from them. They were put to death as well. This is this is the Native American land, right? All those atrocities happen to our people, whether it's the slave ship, the transatlantic slave trade, or the conquest of the Americas by the so-called white men when they destroyed our people, right? Get Hosea 4, verse 1. Read that. This is uh, Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So I was telling you, the Most High God has a problem with our people today. The thing is, we don't. It doesn't resonate with us. We don't. We don't understand that. Well, then, uh, we know you believe in God. You believe in a God. Yeah. We don't understand that. Why would a God have His people in the situations that we're in? Why is the black man the one that's on the bottom of the totem pole? You understand? Why are we the ones strung out on drugs? Why are laws created? Why are we like crabs in a barrel? Always looking to step over each other. Look at this. We come out here to teach our people. Our own sister now. She don't own the gas station. Right. right, right. There were so-called white people listening to us. She sat there calling the police on us. And instead of asking whether to turn it down or, or she told her brother, hey, you know, we don't want y'all handing out flyers. Yeah, we don't want y'all handing out flyers on our part. We respect that. We have a problem with going against the laws of the land, but why she came out? Oh no, no, y'all can't. Why all that energy, sis? When we're trying to uplift our people, we're trying to show our people the truth about slavery. We're trying to give you some form of identity. Our sisters don't want that thing, and that's why the Most High has a problem with us. Though he has a problem with the men and the women. Our biggest enemy, though, 
is them black women. That's right. It's like, well, we got to get our women in line first, just like the woman tried to play you just now. I'm, I'm going to deal with your situation because you could have got your ass put to death. Yeah. You see what I mean? <laughs> over, over a woman. That's what I'm saying. Read that again. Huh? Hear the words of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Y'all pay attention. So God has a problem. Hold on a second, bro. Let me get, I'm going to let you tell your story in a minute. Hold, read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So the question is, why does God have a problem with us? Read. <laughs> because there is no truth, no, no mercy. There's no truth, no mercy. Crabs in a barrel. We're quick to, to pull the trigger or deal with our brother in a way that, that's violent. Or, or in a way to where no remorse, no mercy on our brother. But if a so-called white man deals with us a certain way, we got to forgive them. We, we forget about all the things that they've done to us and that they continue to do to us. Well, no, we got we to gotta forgive white man. But if little Pookie come and try to rob me, I'm going to put his ass to I'm going to kill him. Bring it out. I got a problem with him, but the so-called white man rob us every day. Right. You're being robbed on your job based off the wages you get, and they take the wages from you. through. It's called taxes, right? right. They're robbing you. You're not getting all your money, but we don't have a problem with that as a people. We never look at the people that did this to our people as the, the main source of our issue. But it starts within us, though. God has a problem with you, you, us, every single one of us because of the way we conduct ourselves as a people. Read. No, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. We don't have a knowledge of God. If I ask every single person out here, what religion do you follow? We'll get 10, 15, 20 different religions. Forget Forget the fact that 90% of them might say, I don't believe it. I believe in a higher power, but I don't believe in no God. I believe in a higher power, but who wrote that Bible? I don't believe in that white man's book. Or I believe in Allah. Or I'm a Buddhist, or I don't believe in nothing. That's the problem. They don't have no knowledge of the true God that we're supposed to serve in this land. Read. Right. By swearing. By swearing, read. And lying. Our people love to lie. Now the Most High is listing the problems that he has with us that he has with the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American. Men first. Read. And, uh, and huh? that's, the Bible? that's the King James Bible. You see, and a lot of people don't even know that this is in the Bible because the Christianity keeps you from reading that thing. Right. And they're not going to teach you that thing. That's right. I know you're going to bring that out, right? It's been translated. There's a difference between change and translated, right? The translation changed because we don't speak that original Hebrew and Greek language that our forefathers wrote it in. So it had to be translated. You understand? Read. By swearing and lying and killing uh -huh. and stealing. And even if it, all right, let's say it was changed. Let me ask you a question. If this was changed and it hasn't been, is this the problem in our community though? Swearing, lying, stealing, read. And committing adultery. Doing what? Committing adultery. And doing what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's real talk though, right? Yeah. Is that not what's going on with our people though? So the Bible, we can sit there and play around with the Bible like it's a fake book if we want to and say, who wrote that book? But ask yourself, is this written about our people? What we're reading, we're reading straight out of it. You're not hearing my words. Read it again. Committing adultery. They break out. And blood touches blood. Now, they said they all break out and blood touches blood. What's that going into? We all break out. Now, most has a problem with us. Swearing, lying, killing, stealing, committing adultery. We all break out and now blood touches blood. What's that going into? Blood touches blood. How you doing, sis? That's black on black crime. Right, that's a fight. We hate each other. That's the Bible. The Most High God is saying, I have a problem with us as a people. Let's go through that list again. By what? By, by swearing. Because our people love to swear. I swear to God, I'm going to do this. God say, don't do that. Don't, don't swear to God and then you end up breaking your oath. I swear to God, I'm going to do this tomorrow. And then, oh, I swear to God, I'm, don't do that. Because now you're tempting the Most High. Read. And lying. And lying. Our people love to lie. Our people love to lie. This is a true book. It's, look, we can sit there. It's the King James Bible. Who wrote that book? We're showing you who you are in the Bible. It hasn't been tampered with in regards to the, the basic knowledge that's in there. Right. 
Nope. Now, there's different versions that have been created after the King James Version to take some truth out of it. That's why we deal with the King James Bible. And that's why if you want to slander someone and get people not to read your book, what are you going to do? Say he, he's a faggot. Say he was a say he was a so-called white man. All different things to try and discredit him. Sir Anthony Weldon did that. And Edomite did that against King James and lied on him. King James was a black man just like you and me. Right. You understand that? He was a king when the Moors ruled in Europe. That's right. We ruled the Europe. That's why they call it the Dark Ages. Break it out. We don't pay attention to those things. We have a very deep history over there in Europe. And guess what? That history is in the Bible as well. That's right. We don't know that, though. They keep that from us. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and, killing? and, stealing, and stealing and committing, committing adultery. Adultery is a very dangerous thing. Very dangerous. Get Proverbs 6. Adultery is very dangerous, and you understand that. Like right? that's why you was probably like, "Yo, let me go get a drink right now," because I was about to get put the. I don't know what this dude could have done. I ain't have no tool on me. I ain't have nothing. You understand? But a lot of people go through adultery. Have you committed adultery before, sis? You never cheated on a man. You ain't mad. Adultery goes deeper than marriage. <laughs> adultery goes deeper than marriage now. I got faith in the most high, so I ain't, I ain't no You got, I believe like, So I'm you gonna, never, so you never I'm, been with a look, significant if I'm other. I'm committed to someone that I say I'm committed to, to I don't cheat. Uh huh. You never cheat, but let me actually, cheat. let me show you something about adultery. You can be tempted into a cheat. situation. Let me, let me show you something about adultery, though. You know what adultery is? Because you, you, you said the key point. I'm not married, right? Yeah. But in the Bible, adultery is one of the main ten commandments. Under the ten, there's bylaws underneath it. So guess what falls under adultery? Fornication, because you break the laws of marriage when you sleep outside of marriage. Bring it up. A boyfriend and girlfriend is adultery. That's right. We gotta understand that. I don't do that though. But that's not our so you married, sis? No. I'm but you done had sex before. That what I want to know. And you have that's children, good. right? Yeah. Now do, do you think all right, that's a beautiful now, now understand yeah, something. No, we're not telling you that. We're not telling you that. We're showing you Jesus Christ right now. As a matter of fact, I can deal with that same situation. Let me deal with his first. Then I'm going to deal with yours, okay? First, get the law. Get Exodus 20. We're going to deal with his situation first, and then we're going to deal with the laws. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. What's your name with the black cat? What's your name, bro? Nobody. How you doing, King? You Isaac? Hey, pay attention real quick, Isaac. We're going to deal with you in a second, too. Read that. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So the law says don't commit adultery, right? Yeah. As Israelites, God commanded us to come back to his laws. He has a problem with us now because we break that commandment as well, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Let's see what happens. Get Proverbs 6. Is it 21? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and 32. But whoso committeth adultery. So now, he's telling you some of the problems with committing adultery, right? Read. But whosoever committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. When you commit adultery with a woman, you lack understanding. Yes, sir. Right? Because and there's, a, there's a key thing. First of all, you're breaking the laws of marriage, right? You're breaking up a family. You're not even, because once that woman deals with a man, according to the Bible, her husband has to put her away. She can never come back to that husband again. And what if she has four kids with that man? Read, read on. Now, hold on a second. Read on. He that does, it destroys his own soul. When you do it, you destroy your own soul. You don't pay attention. That, that sin that you commit, breaking up a, a, a serious that's union deep. that the most I put together, and but you're still destroying your own soul. That's covetousness as well. Because you covet another man. You want something that another man has. That's a problem. That is the lack of knowledge that we don't have in this Bible. There's no truth in this land. We don't know who our God is. Hold on a second. Read. Uh, a wound uh -huh. and dishonor shall he get. He says, a wound and dishonor shall you get. You dishonorous. Now you walk around. That's that dude that done slept with all the women in the neighborhood. He's a hoe. <laughs> right? He's no good. Nobody ever want to settle down with you. You just make babies, have baby mamas, get on child support, and get your ass thrown in jail when you can't make the payment. Bring it out. Part of the judgment. Yeah. Oh, man, this may happen as well. Read. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. Your reproach. Some brothers that you done slept with their wives, your reproach shall not be wiped away. The reproach from the woman because you done slept with her, got her pregnant, got her household all jacked up. Now she got a child. You ain't taking care of the child. Now she going through hell. So she going to hate you and the brothers going to hate you and their parents might hate you. 
and the children with the child gonna hate you because they don't know their daddy. They grow up. They, I hate my father. F that nigga. Right. Bring it up. He ain't never did shit for me. Right. Read on, home. We ain't finished yet. Read. Right. For jealousy. For jealousy now. Read. Is the rage of a man. It says jealousy is the rage of a man. Now you 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 had a problem with that now. Read. Huh? Go forth. He will not spare in the day of business. If you get caught in that woman's house in that man's house with his wife, it says jealousy is the rage of a man. That's why you was like, damn, I ain't even have my peace on me. She should have told me. Because you know when that dude comes in, there's gonna be a problem in there. He may not just deal with the sister. He may see something and hey, man, hey, you got a problem. It's mine. About to kill the whole family. What is you doing? Right, read. He will not regard any wrestle. He ain't going to, you ain't going to be able to pay him no money. He said he's not regard what? Any what? Ransom. He will not regard any ransom. Read. Neither will he rest content. And he's not going to be content with anything but this. Read. Thou. Thou give us any gifts. Don't, Don't you give him any gifts. He's not going to be, con only thing he's going to be content with is either beating your ass or putting you and her to death. He ain't gonna be content. That's why we don't play with it. That's why the most, but that's the problem in our community because a lot of murders go on because of adultery. Right? Now, what's your question? Real quick, then we're gonna deal with the sister real quick. Get that in John, dealing with the sister in adultery. Read. What you got? In that book. You still stuck on that book. What did, was your situation not in the book? Did we just not read about us? Yes, yes. So it shouldn't matter about the book. Okay, read on, read on, read on. I mean, what you got? What you got? Tell me why. Mm -hmm. Man lived for long ages and had multiple wives. Why well, men lived for long ages and had multiple wives. You want to know why? Because we ruled the earth at a time. There's nowhere in the Bible where you see a regular man with multiple wives, especially not during our captivities. Now, of course, King Solomon had wives. He was a king. And the Most High never wanted our kings to have multiple wives. Where's that in Deuteronomy? Real quick. I'm going to show you something. That's not a law of God. But let's read. Is it Deuteronomy? Multiply, yeah, multiply yeah, it's the same place with voting. No, or Leviticus, 17. huh? Yeah, chapter 17. Deuteronomy 17. Let's read that real quick. We're gonna show you that. We're gonna answer this question. Stick around, though, sis. What's your name again, Katrina? Because you said something very heavy that all of our people think when they see us, they think because we have a Bible, we didn't say nothing about you going to hell or nothing. But they see us with Bibles, they get convicted automatically. Oh, sh he, he, we, I'm going to hell now. No, I ain't hearing that, right? Nah, we was just like every single one of y'all. We come from that. Some of us have baby mothers right now. And exactly. We are the army of the Most High. Read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17 and verse 17. Neither shall he have multiple wives to him. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself. Now that's talking about a king. That And this Deuteronomy 17. He lists the laws regarding the king. He says, neither shall he multiply wives to himself. The Most High never was good with that. As a matter of fact, give me, um, give me, um, interracial marriage, Nehemiah 14 with Solomon. Nehemiah 14, it's towards the end. Because King Solomon had a lot of wives, right? Now, that, that was dealing with 13. That was dealing with interracial marriage, right? But it's all the same. You ain't supposed to be dealing outside your nation. And the Most High said Solomon sinned because he dealt with all of those different women. You understand? That's a problem. He said, did not Solomon sin because of that? Interracial marriage. Let me see. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13 and verse 26. 25. 25, verse 25. And I contended with them. So our job is to contend. So when we see our brothers and sisters, whether it's strung out on drugs, whether it's in the midst of adultery, whether it's our sisters in the midst of whatever, whatever our people are doing, I would we come out here to show our people their transgressions so that they can turn from those ways or at least know the right way and know that you do you can change. Christ came for you to change and he has a message for you. He's telling you, okay, you're in the midst of that thing. I didn't put you to death. I didn't give you an STD. I didn't put you in a, a situation that is just crazy. Stop doing what you're doing. Right. And turn to the Most High God. Turn to this book right here. Start doing it so that now you can prosper spiritually. You understand? Read that. I contended with them and cursed them and smoke certain of them. Now, this is what the prophets was doing back then. We're not coming out here cursing at y'all. We're not out here hitting y'all and smoking you. But back then, Nehemiah, <laughs> Nehemiah, them dudes wasn't playing. It get your, they stopped buying and selling on the Lord's Sabbath day. You're not going to do that around us. See what I mean? We don't do that now. Right?
But when Christ returns, guess who's going to be doing that? Christ and his disciples and the, the holy angels that's coming down to destroy this place here. Bring it out. And you don't want to be, if, if you know that Christ is for you, why, exactly, why wouldn't you want to be on his side instead of the side that's going to burn and be destroyed? When you have an option to be on the side of Christ, you have an option to be on the winning side. Read. And put off their hair uh -huh. and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, okay. nor take their daughters unto their sons. Now that's going into interracial marriage. But Solomon had a thousand wives and concubines combined, right? That's why it happened. It turned his heart from the Lord. And that's why now read verse 26. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Solomon sinned by those things. So just because he had multiple wives and he dealt with the other nations, the most I said that thing was a sin. Right. It wasn't a good thing. And especially our black behinds now, we can barely pay our rent. And we're talking about we want to have two women. Bring it two out. Two wives. It don't work. And, and the women are the ones working. Bring it out. What? Yeah, there's, there's laws in that. Yeah. The Bible tells you not to go next to kin. Deal with your next to kin. Yeah. Right? right? Now, distant cousins may be a little bit different. That ain't different at all. That's but it's thing. still not good. Yeah. You understand? Why can't you find somebody else from another right. household? Get John 4. Is it John 4 with the woman caught in adultery? John 8. John 8. John 8. Yeah. Now, let's deal with your situation. Because you said that we're sending you to hell. All that stuff. That's not what we're doing. We're going to show you what Christ did, said. Right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Straight to the point, verse, verse, four. Four. Three, verse 4. Verse 4. They say unto him, Master, this woman has taken uh, in adultery. Right. He said, Master, this woman has been taken in adultery. So back then, the scribe and Pharisees, they was policing our community. You wasn't just going to be next door to somebody committing adultery and the leaders didn't say nothing. So they grabbed her up. Hey, Master, this woman was, was taken in adultery. What was the judgment for a woman cheating on her husband back okay. then? What? Okay. Right. Okay, she put to death. She gets stoned. Huh? The prostitute in Rahab, why he say the prostitute in Rahab, and they say the rest of them, because she had, she had no Yeah, but what did she do? Right, and what was her faith? But, she made sure that she took care of the prophets because the prophets was at war at that time, and she, she, but she and. she still kept her faith in who? The Most High, right? Right, but they spared her. They and her household because why? of what she did. Like the Most High sent to get her. He had already paid the prophets. But, but now, but know. listen to this, right? Because this is going to be a good point for you, right? And to deal with your faith. Read. Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. That that woman should be put to death if you committed, if you're in adultery. Back then, that adultery could be fornication. If that woman wasn't a virgin by the, when she got married, she was put to death. That's what I'm telling you. Right, but understand, we're we going to deal with Christ for you. We're going to show you. We're telling you the story now so that Christ can teach you and not you don't hear my words. Right. You understand? That's why we're reading the Bible to you. Read. But what thou sayest. Good. So he said, Christ, what do you say we should do with this woman? The same thing now. What should we do with our people that we see them in sin? How you doing, bro? How you doing? Read. What thou, what sayest thou? This they said, tempted him. They was trying to tempt him. Read. That they might have to accuse him. Uh -huh. But Jesus stooped down. And with his finger wrote on the ground. Christ, after they said, what should we do with this woman that we just caught with adultery? What we're going over now, bro, is we're showing our people, we give our people flies, and automatically they think that we're out here to pass judgment upon them, right? But really, all that we're trying to do is show our people they transgress, and we're going to get that in a second, so that they can acknowledge that what they're doing is against God. First thing they acknowledge that, look, I'm one of God's chosen people, the black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. So you're held to a standard. The reason why we're going through the issues in our community today is because we're not doing what God commanded us to do. 
That's so he's right. punishing us as any parent would punish their children. We're being punished right now. Read. As thou, he heard them not. Go ahead. So when they continue asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Right. So he said, He that is without sin first cast a stone. There's a difference between correction and condemnation. When we say judging people, a lot of times when we when we say we're judging our people, a lot of people take it as the condemnation part. So he's when, looking at the uh, person who's just trying to... Trying to get her killed. And yes, he said, look, right. he who is without sin, okay. you be the first one to put this woman right. to death. And you throw the stone at her. Right. That, we no ain't throwing stones at our people, though. No, no one else could speak, though. None of, what, we're going to read the story. Read. Verse 8. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Go ahead. And they which heard it. Being convicted by their own country. Why do you think they was convicted? After he said, he that is without sin, you'll be the first one to put that woman that got caught in whoredom, got caught in adultery. Why do you think they was convicted in their spirit? Because they look at it, they judge it. Because they know that they was wicked as well, right? So we can't, we're not coming out here telling y'all, <laughs> excuse me, that we're living perfect lifestyles. The thing is, we learn the laws. We strive for that discipline that it takes in order to do the laws to the be get, keep getting better day and day, knowing though that we must forsake yeah. those things. Get rid of. Certain things we got to keep knocking off, whether yeah. it's the dietary law, fornication, all those things, we knock those off. Yeah, we don't use it as an excuse trying. to keep doing it. As long as we're trying, right? Yeah, but you know, a lot of times, man, when people, when our people say tried, like I have, I have children, right I got four kids, right? But we all. But listen, I mean, I mean, you got four kids. Yeah. When you say, hey, what's one of your child's name? Real quick. Keyshawn. Hey, Keyshawn. Why is taking you, why are you still washing them dishes and you've been washing them dishes for three hours? And he says, mom, I'm trying. What do you tell him? Man, don't take that long to wash hey, Exactly. Hey, you bullshit. Stop lying to me, man. You ain't trying, man. You, you bullshit right now, right? Go ahead and wash them damn dishes so we can go on now. You're wasting all the water getting cold. Right. Right. Exactly. So, so when you say I'm trying, we cannot use we can't hey, use the grace that Christ. Right. right. No. Most I don't deal with trying. Either you're doing it or you're not. Hey, right. Hey, okay. right? Read. Read out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had lifted up himself uh -huh. and saw none but the woman. So now Christ, after after they all left, that wanted to kill her. Yeah. And it's odd that you now you're here by yourself, right? right. <laughs> it's just crazy, but <laughs> it's like, where's all that accuse you? Because she was sitting there with Christ right by herself. Right, read. He said unto her, now watch what Christ said unto her. Woman, where are those dying accusers? So he said, now woman, where are the people that wanted to kill you because you got caught in the midst of adultery? Where are they at? Read. Has no man condemned thee? He says, has no man threw a rock at you or tried to kill you yet? Read, what she said. <laughs> she said, no man, Lord. She said, no man, Lord. She said, no. Read. And Jesus said unto her, Read. neither do I condemn thee. Neither does Christ condemn you. He's not going to kill you for being for being in the sin and the men show you your sin. You understand that? But watch what Christ told. He gave her instructions, though. Watch this. Read. Go and sin no more. He said, what? Sin no more. Stop living that lifestyle now, though. He spared you once. Get the arm of grace in Romans 6. He spared you once. He may even spare you twice. Everyone has a different measure of, of grace, though. That brother that I hear, that was that, was that old girl, crib. That might have been his day. Right. You never know. It could have been his day. Right? You never know. That's why we don't try. Right? We, we do it. Now, if you fall... That's one thing, but you don't purposely fall. Watch this, because our people love to use grace as a reason why they continue in sin. God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. Okay. Foolishness. Right. Right. Foolishness. Read. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to commit adultery? If shall we, we know what we're doing, if we know we're sinning, why are we going to keep doing it? Be watch this, because this is what they do. That grace may abound. That grace may abound because we're under grace now. Christ came, he gave us grace so we can continue in sin. That's what they say in the churches. We don't judge nobody. So come on in here as a homosexual and stay a homosexual. Pastor, you can sleep with every woman on the front row, Pastor, and we forgive you. Bring it up. Stay that way, Pastor. 
We can take your money, say it's for the building, and you can buy a Benz with that money, Pastor. Right. We don't care about that in the church. Go ahead, Mr. Drug Dealer. A $65 million jet. Go ahead, Mr. Drug Dealer. Come on in. Just, just give us some money. Keep selling your drugs, though. God loves you. The biggest criminals on the planet, they work. What kind of chain they got? What they got around their neck? A big ass cross with diamonds on their neck. A Jesus piece. That tells you something ain't right. If you're murdering people, if you're selling dope to your people, and the biggest ornament that you purchase is a Jesus piece, that tells you something wrong with white man Jesus. Something wrong with Jesus right there. Right. Because the Most High God ain't gonna let you glorify Him while you doing that nonsense that you're doing. Something gotta be wrong with it. But our people don't like to hear that. Read. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue committing sin because we're under grace now? No, I can no longer wait the cross or the, or the last supper unless I, I got my life on right. That's why I got You're going to deal with that cross in a second. Oh, yeah. God forbid! He's saying, hell no, we don't continue in sin. We got to stop sinning. And guess what that cross is? It's an idol. It is sin. We're not supposed to wear that. It First of all, it represents this right here. It represents, yeah. it represents white supremacy and also it represents false gods. This is not Jesus Christ. That's a black, that's no. Jesus right there. Right Which one is Jesus? Come here. Right there. Which one is the true depiction of Jesus? Right that one there? Yeah. What do you think, brother? Which one is the true depiction of Jesus Christ? That's man, that, that, listen, that's who I see the figure in the, uh, in the yeah. cloud. But, but what are you he, talking about? I had about? to call on Jesus Christ because the, the devil showed me, he had me represent, he, he had me thinking in my mind that um, I seen figures in the clouds, y'all. And listen, it was just a couple of weeks ago. Different people had dolls and all that. I ain't seen no lions. I ain't seen none of that. But like, what I seen in the clouds, I seen them smiling at me. Someone was scary. Someone was smiling at me, but someone was scary. So when, yeah. Well, you see, what, what, well, what should you should you do with that? Because a lot of people hey, talk hey, about they, they minute, come to Jesus' minute, moment. Now. Go ahead, go ahead, sis. Go ahead. Oh, wait a minute. So when I'm pulling my driver, they put me all around. Everywhere. Okay. It wasn't his eye. It wasn't the Lord. It wasn't Jesus Christ. It wasn't Christ Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't him. No, who was it? It was the devil. It was Satan. Get he showed his listen. picture. Wow. And he showed his. He, now he showed himself. But now. And so, when I called, when I said in Jesus' name, when I said in Jesus' name, the sun was shining, and I seen the, I seen the woolly, the woolly. I seen his. You figure. seen that, right? I seen the figure, and guess what he did? He turned into something else. But you see, but now I'm not doubting your vision. You understand that? But what I'm saying is this. You may have seen that. I see the figure. And you seen that and you got a message from it. Yeah. There's a reason why the brothers is out here now you standing here today though. After, because after that, I see what I saw, now y'all start standing around. Exactly. So the message that we're that I see we're showing down you. The street. Right, we was down there last week. Yeah. We're gonna stay up this road here. Um Leesburg. Y'all on this side for a reason. It got to be because of me. All praises. Yeah. But now what are you supposed to do, sis? I got to keep Give me that proverb, I, I mean, Peter's right one and five. Give me mean, five right and eight, five right and eight. Right First right Peter, chapter right five, right. verse eight. Be sober. It says, be sober, Reed. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Keep your mind now on God's laws. We dealt with adultery, right? There's other laws that we got to keep, but the first thing you got to do is know who you are. What's your nationality? What's your nationality, sis? I'm a Christian. You're a Christian? What's your nationality, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but you know what? I'm gonna ask you now. Now he's laughing. Don't don't don't, don't sweat it, sis. Don't sweat it. Indian Indian What's your nationality, bro? What's your nationality? I told you already. What? Tufty. It's all mixed up. Guess what? That is no. But listen, that's just as funny as saying that you're a Christian. No, he's drunk. Well, look, why why you think he's drinking today though? Because he's already destroyed. Read that. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. Let's deal with that drunkenness for a second. Get five and one. What's that? Why you gonna get on me like that? Because you got on is, um, me. Is it Proverbs or Isaiah I mean, five, and, you know, five and one? Five and one that they wake up to drink early? Get that. Like I know Let me show you something. I'm not getting on you, bro. You standing here because the most high, there's something in the spirit, just like the spirit dealing with sis. She said, there's a reason why we out here. And she said, we out here because of her. We're out here for you as well. We're out here for everybody that's in earshot of this world. We're even out there for the sister that called the police on us. Bring it out. But maybe she may, may be like, well, damn, why did I do that one day? She got a demon on her. <laughs> she hates her people. She hates her man. Because we wouldn't bother nobody. Lying to the cops. Talking about people oh, are scared to come out of their car. <laughs> 
people are scared to come out of their car because we're out here. That is a damn lie. And she should be ashamed of herself. And the police was full of garbage as well. You understand that? But we're not going to deal with it. Read. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Woe unto them. It says destruction unto them. Now read. That rise up early. That rise up early because we came out here. What time was it? 12? It's still morning. If you already right. been in the midst of adultery, you coming out here and you and you so if I and you drunk, but I'm still that means rise up early in the morning to do what? That they may follow strong drink. That they may follow what? Strong drink. They may follow strong drink. Read. That continue until night. That, and you ain't gonna stop drinking. <laughs> and you ain't gonna you still drinking now. Read it says destruction, bro. We out here to warn our people, read. To wine inflame them. To wine inflames them. Read. In the heart, in the vial, in the tablet, in the pipe, in wine, or in their feast. And all of that stuff is in your feast. You understand? So it says, whoa, destruction to that man or woman. Because our sisters deal with alcoholism as well. But you know why our people get drunk? What? Why do you think our people get drunk? Why? Because we got so much going on. Why, why do you drink? Exactly. That's what I just said. Exactly. And do you understand that you having that lot on your mind is actually a curse written in the Bible that identifies who you are? Bring it out. I'm gonna show you that. Read. Finish that off. But they regard not the I work of the Lord. They, they do what? Regard not the work of the Lord. Because now you out here. Today's the most high God Sabbath day. This is a day where you're supposed to be on our side today. Coming out here, handing out flyers, waking your people up. But you wake up early to strong drink and you forget the work of the law that you should be doing. You too. You could be back there with our, we got sisters at the school right now, preparing food, preparing oh, themselves, my. getting ready. You understand that? You forget yeah. the work of the Lord when you wake up early to strong no, drink I, because I, you I, allow. I didn't forget because the most high son, that fellow, whoever came to me, the one with the afro. Right. He said, and I was talking to him about. All praises. All and I, we, yes, I was. Letting him know what I do, and I gave him a little bit of insight on what I knew. He said, I'm still learning. Yes, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Of course, so we still I learning. Still got a long way to go. You got a long so, way, but not. So. What, what we want you to do is start, though. Now it's time to start serving God. It's one thing to talk yeah. about it, but let me show you. You got to know your nationality first, though. Well, what we're telling you is look at this sign right here. So that means if I'm American, black, but I'm, I'm Indian and Cherokee, so what that makes you Benjamin? All right, and, all right, let's deal with that right now. Because he said he's all messed up because he's mixed with a lot of things. You say you're American black, you're also Cherokee, right? Mixed. Mosai doesn't deal with mixed. You understand that? You are who your father is. That's right. Whatever okay, nation your father came from, that's what you are. But let's prove it in the Bible, okay? Read. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. They declared their pedigrees now. The whole congregation of Israel came together and their pedigrees, their bloodline was declared, was determined how? After their families. After their families, how? By the house of their father. By the house of your father. So whoever your father is or what your father is, that's who you are. So if your father was a Native American, you're still Israel. It's just that My you are, American if your father's American black, then that means that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Yeah, you're a, right. That means, you know what Israel means? He's a Muslims are religion. And a lot of our brothers are caught up in Islam. That's an Arab religion. That's not a nationality. He's a black man serving a, a Arab God that was forced upon him the same way this God right here was forced upon our people. You see Catholic your Arab. They serve the black God. They know the Catholics understand that Christ was black. They have the black Madonna, all those oh, different things going right. on. Only in America that we're so dumbed down that we don't understand that the images in the Bible, they were black people. Right. You understand that? But now knowing that, you got to know your nationality first. I, there's no way in the world we, we're going to come back out either next week or the week after next. We'll be right down the road next week more than likely, right? right. There's no way in the world we're going to see you again, sis. And we ask your nationality and you're going to say Christian. That means we ain't doing our job. Okay, you understand that? So now we're going to show you your nationality. All right, show me. We're going to show you. Get Deuteronomy 28. We're going to start with 28 and verse. Get one and one. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Bring it out. The book of Deuteronomy was written to the Israelites, the Israelites only. The Bible is an Israelite book only. It's not for everybody on the planet. That's right. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. These be the words 
which Moses spake unto all Israel. The book of Deuteronomy are the words that Moses spoke to the Israelites. That was the audience here. Now go to verse 20, chapter 28, verse 15. Oh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thou art not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now we made a covenant with the Most High. We read in Hosea earlier that the Most High has a problem with us because, and he listed all those different things. Killing, swearing, lying, all adultery, all those things, right? Those are things that are prevalent in our community and guess what? Those are the reason why the curses are on us because we broke God's laws. We made a covenant with God that said, hey, matter of fact, read verse 1, 28 verse 1. Read this. This is the covenant that the Israelites made with the Most High God. Read. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The covenant was if we listen and do what the Most High tells us to do. You know what I mean? Keep the commandments. Do Follow those laws. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high uh -huh. above all nations of the earth. So he said if we keep the commandments, we would be the ones set on high. We would be the ones collecting taxes from, from the other nations. We would be the ones that, that live in the best neighborhoods. Right. We would be the ones that have slaves working for us, making us rich, right. taking care of our families. You understand? He said, if we keep the commandments, he would set us on high. And when, when you read verse 15, he said, when you break the commandments, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee, right? You know, born to break the right? Of course. That's part of the program. But guess what else we were, we were born to do? We were born to acknowledge what we were doing wrong and do what? And yeah. repent. Exactly. That's right. So that the most, it's a big story written by the most high God. I'm with the Israelites, so I'm an Israelite. So You're an Israelite. That's, that's but now let's show, Israelite. let's let's prove it now. Um, give me right. sign and wonder. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So we know that that's a beauty source store because the sign says beauty. When we're looking for some alcohol, that ABC store, because the sign <laughs> says that, right? Right. But so it says these curses. Now, the people that are going through these things, that is a sign that those are the Israelites. You understand? That's a sign that identifies who the Israelites are. That's out. why slavery is important. That's why your flyer says the truth about slavery. That's why we have these images. Guess what else is going on? That's why the so-called white man is taking these things out of your school system now. They're not trying to teach that because it identifies who the Israelites are. And guess what else it does? Give me verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemy. It shows you that they're our enemies. That's right. It shows you that they're the bad guys. That's they don't want us to know the truth because it makes them, it puts the heat on them now, knowing damn, I'm the devil that the Bible speaks of. You understand that? That white guy, all that is of the same people that did this atrocities to our people, and our people will fight for that thing. Our people in Christian churches fighting. For the same people that put us on slave ships. Break it up. Same people that give us the worst educations today. Right. The same people that create laws and create systems to imprison us. Read that. Oh, yeah. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, right. which the Lord shall send against thee. So God sent them against us, though. So it's not just our it's not just the white man's fault. God sent them against us. Why? Because we broke the commitment, we didn't keep the laws. Read. In hunger Go ahead. and in thirst. So if you want food or water, who do we got to get it from now? The white man. You got to get it from them. Read. <laughs> and then nakedness. And you got clothes on your back. <laughs> exactly. Read. And then what of all things? Guess what? You know what? The way you dress is dictated by the so-called white man. That's right. Right. You know why? Because they control the media, they control social media, they control the trends and all type of things. There was a time when, if I went to school, hey brother across the street, our generation when we went to school, we had we listen, had the here's the thing: when we went to school, if our pants was too tight, we was getting kicked in the ass. That's, that, that was never cool. <laughs> right. That was never cool, right, right bro? No, Tell was, the truth. We get slapped. Right. 
But now, skinny pants is the thing. The white man teaches how to dress. Guess what? Those tights that you got on, sis? <laughs> there was a time where our sisters wouldn't come out the house wearing spandex. Right. You understand? Yeah. But why is that popular now? The white man. Because a so-called white man told us that it's all right, and sisters, we want y'all to dress that way. It says, in want of what? In want of all things. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, those yokes of iron upon our necks, it says, until he has destroyed us. So remember now, we said these curses are a sign. What nation of people had yokes of iron upon their necks? Who did that happen to? This? That happened to us. That happened to your ancestors. That happened to your forefathers. The white man didn't have this happen to him. You don't see Chinese people with yokes of iron on their necks. But remember now, it said it's going to be a sign. It says, he shall put a what? A yoke of iron upon thy neck until, until he has destroyed thee. Until we were completely destroy, destroyed spiritually. Spiritually. Spiritually, think about it. Think about it. We're not rebelling against the white man today. They had to make sure they whipped our backs and put that yoke of that leash on their dogs. Exactly. They had to break our spirit. And that's exactly what they've done now to the point where our own I we keep talking about it. To the point where you see your brothers coming out here. We ain't out here selling no damn dope. We ain't out here prostituting our sisters. They, they, they'll let a crackhead walk around the damn gas station all day. But brothers with Bibles, they got a problem. And call the police on brothers with Bibles. Right. That is destroyed. Right. You understand it? That's our people. What you got? Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. No. My people. God says now his people, the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites, is God's people. Read. Are destroyed. They are destroyed now. Why though? Read. For lack of knowledge. For lack of what? Knowledge. That's what you're getting today, sis. That's what that brother got today. That was in the midst of adultery. That's what the men got. That's what, whenever you get a fly, that's knowledge. What? We're trying to wake our people up. And the most High is going to wake up who he needs to wake up. Right. You woken? We're going to see if you woken in a second now. But you understand, do you need to read any more proof who the Israelites are? So who, what's your nationality? You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, right? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. 